Hello, and welcome to the Notary Business Talk, the podcast dedicated to sharing ideas, strategies, and techniques to help grow your business and improve your life. And now, with more than two decades of notary business experience, your host, Abraham Zamora, the notary entrepreneur. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Notary Business Talk. My name is Abraham Zamora, and I am the notary entrepreneur and we're back again with another episode of our direct business series that we're basically holding now on a monthly basis with my good friend and co-host ronnie mickle and uh, just quickly for those of you who might be new and aren't familiar with who ronnie mickle is let me quickly introduce you to to this young man ronnie mickle is the owner of unlimited inc notary which is a very successful nationwide signing service company he is also the owner of NotaryStars.com, which was one of the most robust training courses available for loan signing agents. He is also the owner of Online Notaries Public, which, as far as I know, Ronnie, it's the first direct directory exclusively for remote online notaries. Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. Very good. So well, help me welcome Ronnie to the show. And like I mentioned earlier, this sort of started off as, uh, okay, let's let's talk about direct business. This is sort of the next level for a lot of notaries who have who came from being just loan signing agents, working for signing companies. And the next step is obviously going direct and getting direct business. Well, now it's, you know, like most things, when you don't really plan exactly how they're going to go, you just kind of go for it. And then it sort of works itself out. I think Ronnie and I have decided that we're going to do this sort of on a monthly basis. And part of why we're doing this is because from our last episode, if you guys haven't listened to it, we had a strategic plan of how to actually think about getting direct business, sort of uh, how to identify clients, how many you should go for, basic stuff like how to keep track of the people you're talking to, like CRMs and that sort of stuff. Apparently, a lot of you got really inspired by that went out there and started talking to escrow title officers and went direct to, to have a conversation. And for some of us, it didn't really go as we would have hoped for, right? But let me just first start off by saying that I commend all of you who even took the first step to go out there and put yourself out there emotionally and talk to somebody. The fact that you made a mistake and hopefully will learn from it is by far the best business lesson you're going to have, because I'm going to tell you guys something. <clears throat> Once you figure this thing called business, and I'm, I know some of you are very successful at this. Some of you are still trying to figure it out and learn it. But once you figure it out and it's, and it's, it's easy to figure out once you learn the skills, there's nothing magical about it. You don't have to be special. It's just knowing the right things to do the right ways. And it's just a basic skill. Once you learn it, man, this thing called business is so fun and exciting. I mean, wouldn't you agree with that, Ronnie? Absolutely. I love my life. <laughs> That's why Ronnie and I get along so well. So we're going to be talking. So based on the feedback that we got from the last episode, and actually, I think, did is, Mo, is Monique here? I, I'm not sure if Monique is. Uh, there she is, Monique. Yeah. So Monique was one of the notaries that reached out to us, and I had the privilege of having a conversation with her for about, about an hour because she felt like she had a, a somewhat of a negative experience when she went in and walked in to talk to direct escrow title officers. Well, perception is everything, isn't it? Once her and I had a conversation, it turns out that what she thought was bad is actually quite good because we learned a lot from it. But first and foremost, since I had a conversation with her, let me just congratulate her because she did what probably two to 5% of the people will actually do, which is take the first step and go out there and put herself out. I mean, she came back terrified, mortified. She was, I, I think Ronnie said she was almost crying, right? She was so emotionally drained by that experience. But check it out, guys. That led to Ronnie telling me about what happened with her that led to me getting her information and calling her and giving her one hour of my time. You know what I typically charge for coaching. She got that for free. All of that from just having the courage to go out there and talk to somebody and, and overcome that fear of that rejection. So first of all, kudos to Monique. Good job. And we'll, we're going to talk about a little bit about her situation and her story. But first, let me just really quickly say that this show is in part funded by our are, are the affiliates that we work with. And so I just quickly want to just mention them. 
just to show them their gratitude. Again, this is part of how we fund this show. It is free for all of you guys, and I hope you guys get value out of this. So let me quickly just mention them. Uh, so the first affiliate's Notary Gadget, and I'll say this is really the only accounting business software that I've ever used for managing my my signings, my tracking my invoices, tracking expenses, mileage, and you know, so they're a sponsor of the show. And so if you guys want to get a free trial of Notary Gadget, I encourage you guys to go to notarygadget.com forward slash notary business talk. And you can get more information about that. The next sponsor is the, uh, the next affiliate is a company called Ethos, which is a life insurance company. And what they're doing, is they're sort of revolutionizing the industry by using artificial intelligence. You can now get an instant life insurance policy through them with no medical exams, no blood tests. And some of those policies start as, for as little as $7 a month. So they are an affiliate with the, with the Notary Business Talk podcast. They've been featured on Business Insider, Forbes, Fortune, and Yahoo Finance. So they're a great company. I'll give you their affiliate, their affiliate link here. It's agents.ethos, that's E-T-H-O-S, life.com, forward slash invite, forward slash 9 e 8 Six, five. Yeah, that's long. So I'll put that on the chat and also in the show notes for those of you who are listening. And if you have questions about that kind of stuff, financial planning, life insurance, I mean, you guys are in business for yourself. You know, you don't have an employer that's helping you with this kind of stuff. So you can always send me an email, contact at notarybusinesstalk.com. And finally, if you value this show and you get value, I, I do have a membership site on Patreon. You can go to patreon.com forward slash notary, and you can obviously uh, donate to the show and sort of help me with the work that I am doing, assuming you guys get value out of it, right? Let's trade value for value. Okay, that's out of the way. Let's get going. So what we're going to talk about in this episode is really the step-by-step -step process of getting in the door, of getting into a conversation with an escrow or title officer that's going to begin that relationship. In the last episode, we talked about sort of setting up the framework. This time, we're going to talk about the actual process of going into an office and talking about them. And we're going to, and talking to them. And let me just say, first and foremost, that it's starting to get busy. And I, I, Ronnie and I, we were just having this conversation, and we're so excited because typically at the beginning of the year, it's a little slow. But already it's starting to get busy and I'm seeing it. Ronnie, you were you and I were just talking, right? It's starting to get busy again. Definitely the time to be having this conversation. Wouldn't you agree, Ronnie? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So here's what we're going to talk about. Three points on how to walk into the door effectively so that hopefully you don't have the same experience that Monique had uh Monique, Monique's still there Monique would you want to share your story real quick you guys want you guys want to hear from Monique and see if she want to you know kind of ex explain to us what happened uh we'll keep it short Monique if, if you're willing to talk to us I don't think she's on no uh, she's still on I I just sent a request to unmute there okay we'll see if she comes on I'll quickly tell you guys what happened so I had this conversation with Monique and she goes you know I went in there I was so inspired by the podcast and I started talking to these escrow officers and I basically told them that I was a notary in the area and I was hoping to get some business. And she got rejected five times. After five times, she was distraught and she didn't want to ever do it again. And that's kind of where we're at. Do you want to tell us real quick, Monique, kind of how, what your experience was like and really quick, maybe in about a minute or two, kind of tell us what you felt and then, you know, and then we can kind of take it from there. Yeah, I started out pumped. I'm like, yes, I'm going to go do this. And then I got to the title company and I was terrified in my car. Uh, but I just said, I, I'm i going to do this because my business is important to me and I'm trying to grow it and I'm learning. And yes, yeah, so I walked in and um, introduced myself. And I said, I'm new in this area. just want to introduce myself. I'm a, uh, well, I was doing my remote online business, uh, which we talked about Abraham, but, um, that I'm a remote online notary. And, um, and she go immediately cut me off and said, Oh, we don't use notaries. And I was like, Oh, okay. And then I froze as you know, I mean, I'm learning from you guys how to answer, ask more questions. I didn't know that at the time. I just, 
I felt so bad to be cut off so dry and hard. Um, I was just like, okay, thank you. Here's my card. And I walked away. So, and it happened quite a few times that day. Very similar situation. Right, right. Thank you, Monique. Thank you for sharing. And yeah. let me just say, Monique is an inspiration, right? She she lived in California. She had to move to Texas because the the pandemic shut her business down. And there's, I mean, her and her husband are just real fighters, real ambitious. She ha she homeschools her children. And so this is something that's really important to her, that having that freedom to be able to manage her time. So yeah. Monique, I commend you for working so hard at trying to get this business yeah. going. Thank you for being here and sharing your story. Let's give her a round of applause, everybody. There we oh, go. Thank and you, Abraham, I, I just want to add in on this too. Yeah. Monique is actually a really wonderful notary. Uh, I get the pleasure of working with her at Unlimited Ink Notary, uh, actually on some of your files for your book of business at Unlimited Ink Notary. Oh, awesome. She's, um, she absolutely knows her stuff, you know, as a notary. I'm glad that she's here tonight because I'm the one who got that initial text message, you know, on Facebook, uh, cause we're friends on Facebook and those sort of things. And she, she said, look, I, I started this journey and I was like, whoa, 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 let's calm down. You know, you know, let's talk about it. And I'm glad that you're here tonight, Miss Monique, because I know that you're a wonderful notary and I know that any wonderful notary out there can can start this journey. Thanks, Ronnie. Yeah. And it's uh, you actually notary stars changed my business. So if anyone's not already taken the notary stars classes, I highly recommend it. It was the turning point of when I actually started getting business. Well, thank you for that. But tonight. Yeah. Let's tell everybody how they can get business, whether they have notary yeah. or not. <laughs> yeah. This is it. This is the conversation we're having today. So we're going to talk about three main things. By the way, Monique, thank you again for that, for that, uh, for that experience that you shared with us. But we're going to talk about three main ways that we need to think about when we are going to be walking into some some office and have a conversation with someone to try and earn their business, right? And and so the first thing we need to do is qualify our prospects. We need to find out if we're even talking to the right person and the right company that's going to give us business. I mean, Monique was talking to to to, to uh, escrow and title officers about RON, remote online notarization. A lot of those agents have never, if they've heard of it, don't really use it. And so she was leading with something that really wasn't appropriate for that client that she was trying to have a conversation with. So we need to know who we're talking to and if what we're saying is what they're looking for. This is called qualifying our prospects. And not every prospect, not every escrow officer, not every title officer is actually going to need or want what we have to offer. So our goal is to identify those from the get-go and save ourselves a lot of heartache and not get rejected because you're talking to someone that can't even give you the business that you're trying to obtain, right? Then it's starting the conversation. How do we actually start the conversation? Now, I'm going to I'm going to tell you sort of the errors and the mistakes that Monique made. And again, this is part of the learning process, right? Failure is not failure, but it's just an opportunity to learn and grow. You'll never learn and grow unless you go out there and make mistakes. I mean, making mistakes is okay. But the problem with Monique is that she went in there trying to sell herself, sell her service sell her product, and she was talking about herself. Now, if you guys recall in the previous episode, Ronnie and I were talking about how it's not about making it about us, but making it about them. And the way we make it about them is by asking questions. We get to learn about them. We let them tell us what it is they need from us. And now we can speak the language that they want to hear based on what they need. Another thing we learned from the last episode is that there was a lady who was in an attorney state only uh, uh, area where she was she, she, you know, she was a notary and an attorney state only. And she was sort of like, well, how do I get business? Right. Well, it turns out we identified she had one of the best opportunities out of all the notaries because she was able to we were able to conclude that her best option was prospecting attorneys who had this business and and basically offering them, hey, I can take that load off of you guys and we can partner up. And so the idea that it doesn't always have to be title and escrow officers that you're going to be prospecting. And there's two reasons why we want to do that, right? One, we can have an alternative way of getting to them, whether it's real estate agents, loan officers, or even a completely different interest industry. 
Being direct doesn't mean escrow title necessarily. It could be attorneys and doing, you know, what's really popular right now is those trusts, right? Those trust signings. Maybe you want to go direct with attorneys. An area that not a lot of people are going after right now in terms of business. So there's an advantage there. So there's a lot of ways of sort of skinning this cat in terms of getting direct business. And it doesn't have to be the way everybody else is doing it. In fact, that at times can be a disadvantage. So we're going to talk about the alternative ways of getting direct business. That doesn't necessarily mean walking in directly to escrow and title offices. So let's first start by making the distinction of who we want to prospect to and who we want to attract business from. This is called qualifying the prospects. Now, I love the phone. I love calling on the phone. And by the way, I'm going to tell you something right now. Ronnie and I, man, I love this guy. Him and I are like best friends in, in this space, in this business. But we don't always agree on exactly the same strategies. It doesn't mean we disagree, but we have different tactics, right? He loves to walk in and that's what he does. And he's a pro at it, right? And we're going to have him give us his insights on how he does that. I like to call on the phone. I'm a phone guy. I love it. And I think there are advantages to doing that. But the first thing is identifying who is your ideal prospect. And a few questions you want to ask is, number one, who is the ideal decision maker? Who should you be talking to? Do you guys think it's the assistant in the front desk at the office? Yeah, no. It's probably the manager or a senior escrow officer or really any of the escrow officers, depending on how they set up their business, right? And who decides what signing company or what notary gets used. The next question is, do they even work with local notaries? A lot of companies have to go through approved signing companies and they're not allowed to use local business, lo local notaries. If that's the case, why would you be going into that office trying to get business if they can't even give it to you? The other thing is figuring out what their volume is. Now, there's a question you guys might be asking, how the heck do I figure any of this out? How do I ask and find out this information? I'm going to tell you in just a minute. But the next thing you want to know is how much volume are they actually producing? Are they busy enough that they can even give you business to begin with? And if they're not, find a busier office and focus your efforts and attention on those locations. And then finally, figure out what kind of documents, what kind of accounts they typically handle. Do they mainly focus on refinance, which is not very big right now, but it will be as rates drop? Or do they focus mainly on, on seller packages, buyer packages? Are they, you know, do, do they do new builds like a lot, like Lennar Title does a lot of new builds, right? And that's kind of their focus. It's important to know what it is they need from you so you know what to say to them. So you can speak their language. So you can tell them that you can give them what they need, not what you think they need. Does that make sense? Anything you want to add to that, Ronnie, before we go into the details? Yeah, I want to share the most like, embarrassing experience of my life. When I, I had only done refis, um, this is probably 10 years ago. Seriously, um, I had just moved into a new area and I thought, okay, I got to get some business because I had always worked on a refi account. And I thought that's what all title and escrow did. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know the language. You know, I had just worked at a title company. They focused on refis. They did not do purchases or sales or reverse mortgages or any of the stuff that was available. And I was so lucky because this was, you know, 10 years ago before selling services were a thing. And I, my first company that I walked into, um, they were like, you know, quizzing me on their type of file. You know, can you do this? Can you do that? And I froze, kind of like Monique said. I I kind of felt like talked to, like I, like I was not smart enough to be there. And the thing is, is that I had the ambition to be there. I just didn't have the knowledge to be there. That's why at Notary Stars, quick plug, we do every loan product under the sun right. because you never know who you're talking to when you walk through the door. And so that's what I want to add on that is you never know when you walk in a title company. And even if you do your research online, sometimes it doesn't tell you what they do because title is title, escrow is escrow. And it's used interchangeably, uh, interchangeably throughout the country. You don't know who you're talking to. They may, they may have an escrow officer in the, in the building that you get to talk to that only focuses on hard money loans. There may be one that focuses, I have had escrow officers 
at unlimited ink that only do reverse mortgages. Mm -hmm. I have I have an account that only does HELOCs. I have accounts that do real estate planning. You have to know when you walk in the door. And by the way, the real estate planning I understand is not title and escrow. I just threw that in there um, because I hope we'll talk about that tonight as well. You have to know how to start that conversation of what do you do so that I can help you. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And here's how I would do it. Okay. So my, my first step, and if you guys want to take notes, here's where you want to take notes. You guys want to write this down. This is where you got the step-by-step -step stuff. <clears throat> my first step would be to do a Google search of the kind of businesses I'm looking to work with escrow offices, title offices, find about 30 to 50 within the radius that you're looking to work in. And I would go click on their website and figure out who the people, if it shows on their website, who works there. Ideally, and hopefully, I'd say half the time, it shows who the, who the branch manager is, who the escrow officer is, senior escrow officer, so on and so forth. If you don't have, have that information, that's okay. You can still make this work, but this is where I would start. Now, the reason I like making the phone calls is because it's a lot easier to get, get through what's called the gatekeeper. You have to remember that there are hundreds of notaries that go in every year to talk to escrow and title officers, the brave ones, right? The ones that are like Monique, that just her business is so important that she's willing to just put her emotions and her feelings on the line, which is, which is amazing. But they do get a lot of that. And so the receptionists are trained to kind of keep those people away from the boss, right? From, from the manager. That's their job, gatekeepers. That's what that's why they call them that. And when you show up with a resume or a business card, it's it's pretty clear you're there to try and solicit business. But a phone call is different because a phone call, if you say it the right way, and I'm going to give you guys a script and how to say it because tone is everything in this situation. You can get right to the decision maker if you know how to say it, right? So let's, this is going to work for those who have the information that they pulled from the website. They know who the branch manager is. They know who the senior escrow officer is. You have that person's name. You're going to call the office and you're going to get the receptionist to pick up the phone. Let's just assume that in this case, David is the, the manager in the branch. Okay. Ah, uh, branch. You, you don't have to talk, David, but there you go. You're, you're part of it. You're always here. So I appreciate your brother. Hi. Uh, um, I'm sorry. So, so you're, you're answering the phone, right, David? So, Hi, uh, she's going to say, hi, this is, uh, you know, so-and-so. How can I help you? Uh, hi, uh, David. My name's Abraham. I'm trying to get a hold of Ronnie. Yeah, she just hangs up on me. Yeah. <laughs> so, again, the tone is everything, right? Here's the thing. You want to know how you give yourself away as a salesperson? You be sweet and nice and ask people how they're doing. Hi, David. This is Abraham. How are you doing today? Yeah. Salesperson. All right. You need to be and act as if you're the vice president of the real estate association board that gives them all their work. And then you need to talk to the manager immediately. And then you don't have a whole lot of time. Hey, David, this is Abraham. I'm trying to get a hold of I'm trying to get a hold. I'm trying to get a hold of Ronnie. This is Abraham. You have a question, Ronnie? Yeah, uh, I actually want. I, I want to add this in because that approach over the phone. And let me lower my hand here. He, uh, that approach over the phone really matches my in-person approach. It, okay. it, it's the exact same thing. It's just that you're comfortable doing it over the phone. I do the exact same thing, just in person. So it really depends on your confidence level, but my thing in person, and this is how Unlimited Inc. really started, and I got tired of getting kicked back the, by the gatekeeper. So you said business card, resume, I like to start with the phone. Yep. And you act like you're somebody who gets through to the decision maker. I've always looked at that no soliciting on the wall, which a lot of notaries are afraid of, as if you're not me. You know, I, I I imagine that it says if not if you're not Ronnie, so say if you're not Leah, if you're not Sandra, if you're not David, just put your name under there and say if you're not you, and walk through that door. And here's the thing, no one can fault you for applying for a job. 
I'm not trying to give you a water cooler. I'm not trying to sell you lunches on the weekend at my food truck. I'm trying to be a part of your team. I'm applying for a job, which is a an American's right. I mean, all notaries, right, in, in the U.S. are Americans who need jobs. So I look at myself like a, not an entrepreneur, like somebody who needs work. And I walk in to that front desk, and this is part of my you know marketing course on the direct business marketing course that I do. I put a, everything in a nice folder, like I'm going to apply to be a part of their title and escrow team. And I tell that desk person, I know you have a, uh, you require everybody to apply online, but I actually just want to hand my resume. I'm going to apply online, not knowing if they have a notary position online or not. I would just love to hand my resume to the branch manager or to the lead escrow officer. And I've had so many people open that, that, you know, book that I give them which is sitting right here with my resume inside and my business card and everything for unlimited ink and go, you're a sneaky one. Let's talk because they have to do sales too. So right. um, that's my approach, but it's very similar to the way that you do it. You create something that they can't say no to. You create that feeling of who is this guy on the phone? He needs to talk to Brenda. She's the branch manager. You know, I create that feeling of you can't turn me down because I'm trying to get a job. You know, it's it to me, I think that they're very similar approaches, but done very differently. Well, and there's yes. And yeah, abs absolutely. And, and this approach works both ways. You can do it in person, go up to the receptionist and say, I'm here to see David. And my, my name is Abraham. Almost like, yeah, he, he's, he's expecting me, you know. And this is Abraham. I, I, David, I'm, I'm here to see uh, uh, Ronnie. This is Abraham. You see how that sounds? Yeah, perfect. And then so it works either way. I like the phone because I, I want to follow up with an actual visit after the fact, but I want to be able to go in already having a ton of information that I got over the phone, right? So that's why I prefer it that way. But you can definitely do it in person, like Ronnie said, and then get that information on the spot. Either way, it, it, both of them will actually work. But yes, absolutely. Thank you for that, Ronnie. And so here are the questions that I would ask when I get through. So either I'm going to get through or I'm not going to get through, right? That's fine. There's two ways of doing this. If you get through directly to the branch manager or the senior escrow officer, this is the conversation I would have. And again, this is not the only conversation and this is not the only way you could say this. This is just how I would say it and make it your own. Talk the way you would normally talk. But this is what I would say. Hey, David, this is uh, Abraham. I'm a local notary here in the area. And uh, I just called kind of to introduce myself and find out if you guys work with local notaries in the area for your signings. Now, did I go in promoting my service? Or did I ask a question to gain information about their business? Do you guys see the difference? So what Monique did was she went in, hi, my name is Monique. I'm, I, I'm a local notary and I'd like to know if you guys are, you know, uh, if you guys have business for notaries or I'm trying to find out if I can help you guys with notary work. The, I mean, the, if you say, they say no, that's a rejection. But if you start with a question, you're gathering information. So they're going to say yes or no. Yeah, we have local notaries in the area. Or no, we don't use them because we have to work with a signing company. All right. No means no. I mean, you can try and pull teeth out of that, but just go to the next one who does work with local notaries. I wouldn't struggle with that. There's so many out there, or at least for the most part. Now that you gather that information, they're going to say yes. Let's just assume they say yes. David says, yes, I do. Great. Uh, okay, cool. Great. Listen, I, I, what type of notaries do you guys typically do? What kind of files do you guys typically do, do oh, focus on in, in that office? Oh, well, we typically do this and this and that. Now, here's where you're going to start actually having a conversation with them. Oh, phenomenal. Then the next question is, and do you guys do a lot of those? I mean, are you guys typically pretty busy or are you guys kind of slow right now? Let them answer that question. What are you gathering here? You're gathering a ton of information, how much volume they have, whether they can even use you or not, and the kind of accounts that they handle. You've also identified from looking in the website who the decision maker is. Be like, oh, phenomenal. Great. Okay. Keep it short. You got to introduce yourself, ask them questions about them. People love people who are genuinely interested in them. 
and say, great, listen, would it be okay maybe in a week or two when I pass by there, if I just stop by and say hello, maybe drop off a business card? Oh, yeah, sure, that's fine. You're done. Hang up. What did you just get through that phone call? A freaking invitation. Now you can go stop by. And by the way, can I stop by tomorrow? No. Hey, the next time I'm in town or something, are you okay if I just swing by and say hello, just kind of pop by and visit? Not too threatening. What are they going to say? No. I mean, that's that's that, that would be that would be a really mean person if they said no to that. But now you've given yourself an invitation, and then you have a lot of information. Now, if it's if they focus on files that they don't that you've never really done before because you you just don't have the experience like HELOCs, for example, then you go to notarystars.com. You learn everything you need to learn about HELOCs. So when you walk in, you know what you're talking about. And Abraham, I want to point out something too. Somebody yeah. put something in the chat that really touched my heart. Sure. Um, when they said it saves a lot of time on gas too. So I want to contrast the two different approaches because, you know, if you guys don't know, Abraham has a large book of business, business that we process through unlimited ink notary. So he essentially owns his own signing service. We just process it under the unlimited ink umbrella. And I built unlimited ink notary and we have you know, notaries in Florida that have their, basically Abraham is all of the West Coast. We have another notary that is up and coming. Well, she's actually a former escrow officer and branch manager that came to Unlimited Inc. after working with us. And she manages all of the East Coast. And then I would be considered like Central United States. Although I'm too busy to even go out and get clients anymore. So they bring them in. Somebody pointed something out that says it saves a lot of gas too. Now you're talking about getting that invitation. So let's combine the two instead of com contrasting the two. Sure. One thing that I've taught for years at Notary Stars uh, when you go out in the field is when you go 10 miles from your house, you need, to, if you don't have another signing and you've got your mobile printer, mobile scanner, like we always preach to do at Notary Stars, that's when you need to get your file done, drop it at the closest UPS or FedEx. And as soon as you're done and you don't have business as a business owner, your number one job should be to Google Map or Google uh, our, our Apple Maps. What are the title companies around me? What conversations have I had with those title companies? And if I haven't, am I brave enough to walk in or do I want to make a phone call and see if I can walk in now? Then you're saving on gas. I have lot. I, I the beginning of Unlimited Inc. was when I got tired of wasting gas on going to places. And I wish I would have met you earlier to have that approach. But my approach was if I went out for a signing, I'm going to every title company. If I go 10 miles this way, I'm going with every company, you know, within a mile radius. And generally title companies, especially competitors, for some reason, you can go to a strip mall in Phoenix. And I'm sure in California, too. And there'll be three of them located in the complex or the strip mall or the high rise. Right. So the birds of a feather flock together or competitors want you to walk past each one. So when you get mad at one, you have to see the other on the way out the door. It's usually pretty easy when you go, there's usually a cluster of title companies there. So using either approach, but I want wanted the person in the, in the uh, I think it was Christy that said over the phone saves a bunch of, of gas, but also incorporating when you go a further distance from your house, and you talked about CRM last time, Abraham. Do you want to mention that as well? Using CRM yeah. to kind of manage clients. Yeah, and this is and this is part of that follow up, right? This is part of, and if you want to really get into it, we won't get into it too much because we want to keep this in a manageable time. For those of you who, especially who are in the East Coast, we don't want to keep you up too late. But uh, CRM is is the way you keep track of the conversations that you're having with the people, and it's a way of managing your communications with them, and so. Uh, I recommend Capsule CRM if you want to look that up because it's free and it's simple and it works really, really well. Uh, and it's good for up to like 250 contacts. So when you start having the conversations, that's where you would log in that information. But let me just take it a step further with what Ronnie just said and the whole gas thing because we can we can step it up a notch, right? Like who's that guy that used to um, used to put like hot sauce on his – let's take, kick it up a notch. I don't know who that guy was it. Emerald Agassi, right? There we go. If you're going to be, if you know that you work in a specific area, specific metro that you're typically busy, then why not do the both, both approaches together? Why not 
start calling the offices that, like I mentioned, ahead of time and try and get that invitation. Don't set a specific time. Say the next couple of weeks, I'll stop by and say hello if that's okay with you. The next time you're in that area, if you've already had the conversation with them, there's no reason to just make a trip out for that purpose alone. You can make that trip while you're already doing the signing, and now you're really saving on gas. Now, these are the kind of offices that you're going to want to have as close to you as possible because if you're going to be doing business with them a lot, you're going to be going into the offices quite a bit. And part of the value that that local notaries offer that signing companies really cannot, it's same-day service. Same-day service where you can pick up documents same day, do the signing, and drop it off either same day or in the morning. And that is a selling point. That is value that you're adding to that, that client of yours. And that's what makes you special. That's what makes you important. That's what makes you different. You got to offer value. Otherwise, there's, you know, the, we, trading is value for value. And this is the sort of the value. So I say we combine both ideas. I think that's a great idea, Ronnie. And, and you know, do you know, Abraham, I also want to talk about probability too, if that's okay, because we have somebody on the call tonight that's actually, I think, a wonderful example of probability. So Nancy uh, Fauché out of Florida, I'm going to actually ask her to unmute if you don't mind. And Nancy, if you're if you're available, I'd love for you to say, I am I, here's here's the thing. There's no leading questions here. What happened the very first time you walked into a title company to go get your first direct client? Hi, they uh, told me they had an in-house notary and would keep our information. But, you know, thank you. And the next day I received a call saying that that in-house notary gave her two week notice. And wow. can you be ready to start scheduling us? Absolutely. Outstanding. The next day after that, they called again and said that she has decided not to work her two weeks. And it's been about two years now and they are a huge client. And how many uh, direct clients have you gotten so far? And I, I think you've been doing this about two and a half years, right? Maybe three? Yeah. Yeah. I've gotten three actually direct clients. And that keeps you pretty busy on top of what you do with signing services, correct? It does, yes. That's okay. a lot. <laughs> yeah. And so sometimes it's about probability, you know, as well. You know, you talked about uh, Abraham going to... 30 clients and getting one, you know, Nancy got really lucky that that client that she walked into and the notary had quit. I've had to wait it out for two years sometimes. Right. And just keep popping by and making sure that they know I'm available and keep me in your file system and my number changed. So I don't want to replace my business card. I've had to wait up to two years, but I have that client and unlimited ink literally and you you guys might view me as a sign service but there's no difference between me and you right you know i just decided to go surpass what i could actually sign myself and start managing notaries you can get to your capacity of what you can handle you just have to play the game of probability on top of playing the game of sales without sales right Absolutely. And in the last episode, we mentioned this. And to me, the numbers are the numbers. And Nancy got got, you know, she got one of the one of those numbers, the probabilities on the first try. Phenomenal. The first office I ever called before I had a strategy, before I figured out all, all that I'm teaching you guys now said yes to me. And I ended up getting him as a client. That was uh, Angel's Camp, uh, Ronnie. And so absolutely. But here are, I think, realistically, the numbers. So you guys don't get discouraged because the numbers are the numbers. And I have a, I have a, I have a, anytime I go, I still get nervous going in and talking to people. It's still nerve wracking. It's much easier now, much, much easier. But I have an affirmation every time I call, every time I'm going to walk into an office, it's if my offer is rejected when making this call, they're not rejecting me. They're just not ready to work with us right now. That doesn't mean they won't work with us in the future. Although I have the power to influence and persuade I cannot make anyone do anything they don't want to. The point is you can't force people to do this. You can't force people to give you business. And people are sometimes, a lot of escrows officers are happy with their notaries. Good. Then leave them alone.
But the numbers for me are for every 10 that you prospect, three will say, yes, they're somewhat interested. And one of them will actually end up giving you business. Nancy got that one on the first try. And that's amazing. Abraham, you, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Before, no, go ahead. before we move on to the, the next part, can I bring up one point that I think is so, because we kind of skipped over it and, and I'm glad, uh, but I want to make sure before we move on to the next point that we definitely address the, the dress part of the job. That's, yeah, I'm going to talk about that next. Yeah. Okay, got it. it yeah got moved in the outline so i want to make sure we don't miss that part you know i sent you that original outline and then i i, I moved it around and i didn't tell you ronnie okay it's okay <laughs> i did it on purpose just you to, know i'm a planner just to <laughs> yes yes you are i know <laughs> okay uh, ronnie do you think we should open up for questions on this section alone or should we just keep going what do you think let's go ahead because the the third point only has you know a few yeah okay things to go over and i think that'll leave us just enough time within the hour to kind of take questions. And if we go over with the questions, that'd be great. People can just stay if they need to. Okay. Yeah. Now guys, let me just reiterate. This is my strategy. This is how I have done it and would do it. If I was starting all over again, there are more than one way. There's more than one way to do this. This is not the only way to do it. It's not the best way. It's not the right way. It's just what's worked for me. And you can take a version of this, some of it, create your own version from this. I'm just letting you guys know what I would do if I was you guys and what I have done. And, you know, as, as Ronnie has mentioned, I try not to, cause I'm, I'm, I get embarrassed, but yeah, I've been pretty successful with this. Right. So, okay. So now that you have this, hopefully this invitation, right. Then by the way, if you don't have the information on the website, you just call and, and, and talk to the receptionist and say this, and I'll, I'll go over this one really quick. If you don't have the, 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 the employees information on the website, hi, David, my name's Abraham. I'm a local notary here in the area. And I was just calling to sort of introduce myself and find out if you guys had notaries. So you ask the same questions, but not to the decision maker. You ask the same questions to the gatekeeper. And then the final question you would ask is, who would I need to talk to about this if I was to be able to work with you guys? And then they'll tell you, oh, you would probably want to talk to so-and-so who's the manager. Now you got yourself a name that you didn't have because it wasn't listed on their website. So that's the only thing I want to add when that information is not available on their website. Who do I need to talk to who would actually be the, the one that could give me, you know, the final decision or the work or whatever. <clears throat> now that you got the invitation, you're ready to go. So I know Ronnie, we talk about, I like a basic business card. I'm simple with the business card. Ronnie is big on resumes. I've never done resumes, so I have no personal experience. Maybe we'll have him talk about that. But a few things. Once you're showing up, the first thing is you want to dress to impress. You represent in the capacity that they aren't able to show up in front of their clients. You represent them out in the field. And they want to make sure you look good. Because if you look good, you make who look good? You make them look good. Absolutely. So... Dress professional. And I'm talking about a suit with a tie if you're a gentleman and a suit if you're a woman. David says, no way. I'm not wearing a tie. Get out of here. I quit the notary business. I get it, David. He's like, no way. Uh, so dress to impress. Bring whatever sales material you want to bring. Business card. Bring uh, resumes, flyers. I would not bring. We talked about this, Ronnie. I would not give them pricing, I would ask them what their pricing is. So now that you're ready to go in there, you have your marketing material, you're dressed nice, you walk in and you talk to the receptionist. The receptionist is David. Hey, David, I'm here to see Ronnie. My name is Abraham. Um, I'm sorry, is uh, he expecting you? Uh, yes, yes, he is. Um, okay. Now, if you hadn't gotten that invitation, if you said that, would that be ethical? Would you be lying? Would that be sleazy, sneaky, and probably not go in your favor if you lied and said, "Oh yeah, she's expecting me," or "She's she, uh, she knows who I am." Yeah, that wouldn't be that wouldn't be right. And they would know. Like, who, I don't even know this person. But if you do it this way, then you already have an invitation because they said, "Yeah, if you pop by, I'd love to say hi and stop by." Once you're there, you start having a conversation. You get to know them. Oh, great! How long have you? This is now where how to win friends and influence people. I've talked about this book many times. This is where now your people skills kind of come in and you start to ask them questions about them. Hey, uh, Ronnie, Abraham, we talked on the phone a few weeks ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm the notary that uh, that just kind of is new to the area. 
And uh, well, you guys have a beautiful office. How long have you been doing this? Oh, no kidding. It sounds like you really like it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so you guys are pretty busy right now. How, how are things going? And you should start having a conversation. Ask them as much as you can about them. I mean, I get so good to the point where I can ask them about their kids and find out whether they're in Little League. I mean, just by asking the right questions. Tone is everything. You know, Abraham, what this reminds me of, but in a much more professional way, you know, I have to say this because, it, you know, it. I was, I'm 43, so I was born in 1980. Uh -huh. This reminds me of my high school girl or my middle school girlfriend who I never actually went on a date with, but we were really good phone friends. And, <laughs> you know, we thought we were the loves of each other's lives. Uh, becoming that relationship over the phone. Uh, that when you do get to meet each other, you're like, okay, you know, this is who I've been talking to all summer on the phone. I got a phone number at the pool and we talked, you know, we were 13 and talked. That's kind of what business is, really. A lot of my escort officers that work with me are my friends that we've never met in person. I text them about what's going on in my life rather than people that I've been in my lives for years because they're the closest people to me. And, um, you know, I kind of imagine that your approach to build that kind of relationship of, I know who that person is before they walk through the door. Right. Absolutely. And remember, guys, business is nothing more than getting people to like and trust you because people love doing business with people they like and trust. And the way you do that is by being interested in them, genuinely interested. You can't fake this stuff. You have to like people and you have to be genuine about it. But yeah, good point, Ronnie. Yeah, and it's about building that relationship. Business is nothing more than relationships. There's nothing magical about it. There's nothing mystical about it. There's no manipulation. There's no secret code or magic potion that you can say that's going to convince someone to, to do something that you want them to do. When you go out, you know, relationships are everywhere. It's not just business or personal. Sure. You go to the grocery store and there are some people you scoot your cart against the aisle as close as it can go because you don't like them. There will be clients that you feel that way about. There will be clients that feel that way about you. And then there are people that you don't care if pass by. And then there are people that you stop and say, hello, how are you? Let me help you get that from the top shelf. You know, business is a, a lot of just all the skills you've learned since the fifth grade come, coming into play. The only difference is you're making money from it now. Absolutely. Yeah. And it feels more personal because you train, you do all these things, and then people make you feel a certain way, but you make people feel a certain way too. And that's a big part of business. Absolutely. And if you guys are still scared about this, if it's nerve wracking to you, I'm going to give you guys a little exercise, okay? a little homework, a little preparatory work to get ready to go actually in there and talking to people and, and start building a relationship. I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is uh, my one of my Google Docs. It's got a list of names. You probably can't see the names. But this is a I have this is titled names. One of the things I've done now, it's like a hobby for me, really. But I do it everywhere, but particularly at the grocery stores. Whenever I go shopping and I'm getting the, the registered check, she's checking me out, I start having a conversation with them. And I try to ask them as much as I possibly can about them. My kid, who's with me all the time, has watched me do this and is now doing it herself, which is super amazing. I figure out who the, what their name is, first and foremost. Then I start asking them a bunch of questions. On multiple occasions, I've, told, I've had people tell me, God, I, I can't believe I just told you all that, right, in like two minutes. Because I made them feel comfortable. And there was, I was somebody that was willing to listen to them when nobody else even takes the time to learn anything about anybody else. And here's a complete stranger who actually cares enough to ask me a question about my life. Well, how long have you been working here? Great. And, and are you, are you, is this all you do? Are you, going to, are you going to school to do something else? Oh, no kidding. Wow. Yeah. And, I, and by the time I leave, I know their name and a little bit about them. I write this down on my names sheet that I have and then a little bit of notes. The next time I see them, hey, Bob, how's it going? How are the kids? Who's this guy? They don't even remember who I am. And I'm over here talking to them like I've known them my whole life. Try that first if you're not sure if you want to just practice with that and get used to asking questions and getting to know people. I think that's a good exercise for you guys to have. Uh, and then so that the conversation ultimately will lead to 
the work. Well, listen, I, I appreciate you taking the time. It was very nice to meet you. And so I, I, it sounds like you already have notaries or you don't have notaries. I'd love to be a second option. Are you open to maybe at least giving me, I, I, what, what would I, what would I, what would I have to, what would I have to do? What would it take for me to, to have you at least give me an opportunity, Ronnie, to see if maybe the way I do things, which is a little different, might add some value to you, Ronnie. Oh, well, yeah, I guess we can give you a shot. Sure. Okay. How, how much do you charge? Well, how much do you guys typically pay? Oh, well, we typically pay this much for file. And then you do this, right? You go, um, like you're thinking about it. Like, hmm. And it's way more than you would have asked for, right? Hmm. I guess I can do that. Yeah, sure. Oh, okay, great, great. I want, I want to say something on that too, Abraham, before we move on to point three. Um, sure. By the way, we have about seven minutes and I noticed that people are starting to drop off and say, hey, it's getting late on our time. We have to respect sure. those East Coast people who are two hours ahead of us or three hours in your case. Um, I want to point out the fees thing. I think this is a really big kicker and I learned to not do this in the beginning. Don't post your fees up, uh, ahead of time. It can undercut you, first of all. Yep. You might be coming in lower than what they actually pay. The best thing to do is ask that question, what do you charge? I see notaries who write me at Unlimited Inc. saying, these are my fees. And I think, great, that's not my fees. Bye. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter if you're talking to a signing service or a direct title. And I've gone in direct titles and they've actually, some of the nice ones, actually one of my largest, largest clients here that give me 40 offices, um, I charge $25 less. And she goes, uh, you need to charge more because I charge more. You know, and it, you need to ask them, what do you typically charge for a signing of a mobile notary? Don't undercut yourself. Find out what they're used to. And if it's lower, you need to find out, are they asking you to go to, you know, the Grand Canyon from Phoenix and back? That's three hours. If it's just their little bubble, that might be worth it taking $25 less because you're going to make less at a signing service, you know, because they got the business for you. So if you're going direct, you might need to adjust your prices and think on your feet, like, okay, those are your fees. This is how willing I'm, I'm and I had a client, um, actually our largest client, um, when I first started, I was there, one of two mobile notaries. There was no one wanted to take, it was just me and some other guy. And he did the in-house signings and I was the grunt boy who went out and drove all over Arizona for them, um, sometimes to the border, literally. And I had a fee and that was why they used me. But then it moved into, well, if you're going to send me all these places, I need to do just a little bit more. And they were okay with that. Yeah. And it got up to signing service type of revenue where I could take enough for me and then send other notaries to do it. And you sometimes you have to start somewhere and find out what they're willing to pay. And they didn't know the Arizona market. Had I been a stronger business person at the, at the time, but I wasn't. And here's the thing. Don't use me as an example. Use you as an example. Use yourself as an example. And set the bar as high as you can, but be reasonable. And anybody who tells you to walk in the door and expect $250 a file, they're lying to you. It just doesn't happen that way. Not everywhere. Seattle, certain parts of Miami, Los Angeles, maybe. And that's if you're really doing bangers type work. And they're like the top of the top. Be reasonable. Ask them their fees. What do you normally charge? And here's the thing that, that I, the kicker, and then I'll shut up on this because I know I can go off on a tangent. A lot of notaries don't understand that title is charging either the lender or the signer for what they see on the settlement statement, okay? And I think this will be the perfect segue into the other uh, third point here. You're not charging title for your services. You're charging their client, the lender, or the signer. It's either coming one of two ways. You'll either see it on uh, the settlement statement, which means the signer is paying for that, or you're gonna see it not on the settlement statement, which means they're charging the lender. It's coming out of the lender fees. Generally, that's how that works. Right. So they have negotiated fees with their lenders for certain files, and they have negotiated prices for saying this is what we'll charge our signers. 
if you don't know what their fees are and you come in at $200 a file or $175 and their fee is $125, you just shot yourself in the foot. You can take one client that does $125 or $100 a file. You know, Arizona, I'll tell you right now, I don't even care to work with Driggs Title. All of you Arizona notaries, go out and go for them. They only want to pay $100 a file. The assigning service can't survive off of their business. And that's so, why it's so important to know this up front, right? Yeah, head into their offices tomorrow. But you need to ask what they're comfortable paying. And I think that I just needed to get that out because I did not want to move on to the next point without you know, identifying where does the fee come from? Who really sets that fee? Well, title sets it knowing what the local market's willing to pay from the signer's perspective or what they're negotiated with their client, which is the lender. And then the, the signer doesn't ever see it. So you got to think about that perspective because it's not what you want. It's what their clients want. Right. Good. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you. Yeah, and you know what? I'm gonna I'm due to due to the time restrictions here, and we want to keep it short. I'm gonna we're gonna I'm gonna skip the last part of it, Ronnie. I think that can be an, an entire show of how we can discuss alternative options to escrow and title. Can we leave a cliffhanger and ask the you, questions? Well, we are. We're gonna ask what, what questions about that. Well, I just well no, not for questions on that. I just want to leave a cliffhanger, and I'm gonna do it whether you say yes or no. I know it's your show, so forgive me, but. <laughs> The last thing, and I think this will lead into the, like you said, it could be its own show. Yeah. Are you targeting only title and escrow clients? Right. You know, that, that's the biggest mistake that notaries make. Unlimited Ink Notary has photo assignments. We have jails, hospitals, title and escrow. When I say 450 clients throughout the entire country, we have real estate and planning attorneys. You know, we can talk about all and all of that uh, on the next one, but Seriously, you can't just be bound to one type of egg. You know, you got to, this industry is like an Easter basket. You can have, you know, the peeps in one corner and you can have a big chocolate bunny in another and all the little pink and yellow eggs that you can open up and they can all have a prize in it. You have to look at what you're putting in your basket. And my best girlfriend that I, I, she would always say, don't put your sh in my cart. You get to choose what goes into your cart. You know, and we can leave that for another time. I, I agree. We're getting close to time. And I want to make sure if anybody has a question that we can get those hands yeah, raised. Absolutely. And it, I'll, I'll, I'll say that and you, and I, you do it to make a good point. And I'll tell you something. I mean, when I started this podcast over two years ago, I think it's almost three years now. I was th I thought to myself, am I going to have enough content to talk about for years to come? Boy, was I wrong. I mean, there, is, there are so many ways that you can turn a notary business into a profitable endeavor and so many directions and so many alternative sources of income that you can use that, that go really well with the notary industry that it's really limitless. The combination and the way you can make money, it's it's really exciting. And there's I'm sure there's ways that I haven't even thought of that are out there. But I just, I just, I just after you saying that, I decided that, Going after attorneys, jail, I think that's more under the umbrella of general notary work and not direct business. So we're going to discuss it under that topic is general. No By the way, who would like to learn about general notary work and have a book of business that's just coming from that? All right. You guys, look at, you guys are all smiling. I love this. By the way, guys, if you're not listening to this live, please come to the next episode live. It's a lot of fun, and we get to ask questions at the end of the show. So I'm going to finish with this. Once you finish talking to your to your to your escrow officer, when you first get to meet him in person, the goal is to get as much information about about them as possible. The goal is to finish it in a way that you can get invited back again or have it be OK to come back again. OK, so that there's a reason for you to be able to come back. OK, great. Well, listen. Oh, yeah. You were talking about that recipe. I have an amazing recipe for pumpkin soup. I'm going to bring it to you the next time I'm around. OK. All right. Sounds good. I'll see you. See you. Fist bump. See ya. You get all their information, you go to your CRM and you put all of that in your CRM, every personal detail that you learned about them. While you're at it, get all the business cards of all the other escrow officers that are there. So now you know who else is in that office. You guys following me so far? And finally, 
send them a thank you card. You can go through send out cards if you're interested with send out cards. It's electronic. You have to be referred to be able to use them. So you can, if you want that link, you can send me an email, contact at notarybusinesstalk.com or just go to the Dollar Tree and hand write a thank you card or a nice to meet you card and send them that. It's a nice touch. They'll remember you. Don't put your business card in there. Don't market yourself. Don't make it salesy. Just send them a nice card saying, thank you. It was nice meeting with you. We're building relationships, not selling our business. Because why? Because people like, say it with me, like doing business with people they like and trust. That makes sense? So we'll end it at that, guys. I think that's enough for you guys to just kind of digest and kind of think about. Hopefully, you guys have a lot of questions. I know Ronnie sends out an email reminder. Respond to him. Send me an email. Let me know what thoughts you guys have on this stuff that we talked about, what questions you guys may have. This will help for the next episode since we're going to be doing this sort of on a monthly basis from now on. So that concludes our episode. Who has any questions, Ronnie? Let's open it up for questions, man. All right, everybody. If you have questions, uh, I know we have Miss Monique, but uh, before we uh, send the request for Miss Monique to unmute there, Please go ahead and raise your hands if you brought any questions for tonight. Abraham is here to answer. I'm here to support. Uh, Miss Monique, go ahead and unmute there. And then anybody else trailing, we would love to hear from you. And then real quick, before we get started, Monique, I'm not the technical guy, okay? I don't know if you're going to ask me a question about uh, do I sign a HELOC on page three and it, does this state offer this? I don't know. That's Notary Stars and Beth and Ronnie. I'm the sales and marketing guy. I can tell you how to sell the heck out of your business and grow your business, but I don't know the technical stuff. So if you have them, fine, but I'll have to uh, tell, help have Ronnie or Beth help me out on that. Okay, so let's go ahead. Go ahead, Monique. Okay, thank you, you guys. That's some great nuggets you guys give us. Good. But I have a question about the homework, the practice of asking questions. So obviously this is a skill that I don't naturally know. Right. So I grew up in a, my family's from Cuba. We're the kind of kids like you're to be uh, seen and not heard. Don't speak unless you're spoken to. And so, you know, I was brought up that way. So it's not natural for me to go up to a stranger and ask 20 questions, <laughs> but I desperately want to learn how to do it right. So how can I learn more specifically about that? How can I get better at that? Well, let me first ask you, how old were you when you came to Cuba? Uh, well, I was born in California, but okay. uh, my my parents had just gotten there when I was born. So your parents immigrated from Cuba? Yes. Holy moly. That must have been some interesting stories. Yeah. <laughs> wow. How, and how did they come over? Uh, they fled uh, during the Castro Revolution. Huh? Yep. Wow. So... How, 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 in what way did they um, raise you that affected the way you feel like uh, prevents well, you? Well, just like you? that, you know, um, patriarchal family, my mm -hmm. father ran everything. Um, and as kids, you're not to be heard, mm -hmm. you know, you're not, you're not to, you don't ask 20 questions. You know, if you start asking questions, they shoo you away. And so those kind of things are ingrained in me, not that I'm not willing to change, uh, but maybe I just don't know how, like, how do I go against everything that, you know, I, I was brought up to do? Abraham, can I, can I please take this one? Yeah, but let me just, let me just really quick say something. So okay. I, I don't know if you noticed what I just did right now with you. No. <laughs> I, just, I just asked you about. You asked me questions. Cuba your parents, when they came yeah. over here, must have been interesting. Hopefully you would have told me some stories. I learned about the fact that you have a, a problem with this. Now I can hopefully offer you some value and, and, and be a friend that can help you. I learned that in what, 20 seconds? Yeah. And by the way, was I, did I seem genuine? Did I seem interested? Yeah. I, I really was, by the way. I think that's fascinating how immigrants come to this country for a better life. And it's just so heroic. I love that. Right. I mean, that's to me, it's, a, I'm so passionate about hearing that. So yeah. it's a skill. Now I know Ronnie might yeah. have a resource, but I'm going to give you some resources. Number one, how to win friends and influence people. Get the audio book. I know you guys have asked me for the book. There's so many versions of it. They're all the same thing really, but 
But if you want the audio book, it's the one with the blue cover. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not going to send the link at, I, I, at some point I might, but the other thing is there's a, a negotiation class on masterclass, masterclass.com. Uh, Chris Voss, I think is the guy. Yes. Take that course. It's all about asking questions. Those okay. two resources will help you re it will help you get really good at getting to know people and learning about them. Ronnie, go ahead. Okay. So I understand that walking in the door or talking to people is a skill that people think you have to learn. Mm. I was told my whole life to be quiet. Yeah. So my dad took my little keyboard away from me that my mother saved all the money to buy. Don't play music. Don't be loud. Don't do this. And I moved out at 15 and my mother had sat me down at 15 and said, run, run as far as you can and go do as much as you want to. And I love my father. He's a complete a-hole to this day. We still working with him. He's a onion that we keep peeling layers off of, but everything that happened to us when we we're younger programs us for what we do in the future. I don't know where this came from. I guess it came from, you know, without getting too personal, you know, being a gay man, I can't really do that in LaGrange, Georgia, or I couldn't at the time. Now I live in, I've lived in Los Angeles, Miami, now Phoenix, Arizona, um, with a little stint in Paris. And I just couldn't see myself not succeeding. And I think about the Eminem song where he goes, success is the only option, failure's not. And I just push myself. And to this day, I push myself. I push out of the comfort zone. If you guys have seen me on Instagram really, recently, I've only started doing Instagram lives recently. I teach you how to do it. I don't do it myself. But now I've started doing it because I know I have a, a, a duty to my students to show them that it's okay. I can tell you how to do those hashtags, do everything. I can do notary really well. You have to push yourself. And when you find yourself in that position of, am I going to make it? That's when you clutch that purse, you put those high heels on and you walk through that door and you smile the best smile you ever said you've ever had. And you ask for that branch manager and you tell them that you're there to apply for a job hmm. and you get that resume into their hands. You know, and I know your story and I won't bring that on camera tonight. You know, I know your personal story, you and I, you, you know, yeah, way back. And I'm, a, I'm so in awe of you right now. And I, I won't be surprised if there's not a star shoot out of your roof and go into the sky like the Batman scene signal one day. But you Talk mentioned this. Me. And yeah, you, you know, <laughs> you keep trying and you keep doing yeah. it. You, you're growing whether you think so or not. Absolutely. You know, yeah. you keep chipping away and I just know that you're going to make it. You just don't know you're going to make it yet. And if you would have told me this 10 years ago, when I hired Hannah, we have 20 something employees now, 25, 30 at Unlimited Inc. It's gotten so much that I have to actually have a sheet of names and departments um, because I work on Notary Stars and at Unlimited Inc. Mm -hmm. um, if you, when I hired Hannah, I said, you'll never get a raise. I never see going past a hundred thousand a year and I'll give you part-time money. And, and now look at us, we're a multi-million dollar company, but I kept putting one foot in front of the other. And I didn't let those, that programming I had that you're stupid, give me the remote, all those things never got in my way. And it was that one little sentence. And if, if nobody ever gave you permission to be great, give yourself permission. Yeah, definitely. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm working on great. it. I, I Walk definitely up to the mirror I'm every trying. morning and say that you're going to be great. Yeah. Well, awesome. thank you. Thank yeah. you, guys. Thanks, Ronnie. Thanks, Monique. Okay. We got three more hands raised. Uh, April. Yeah. Uh, Miss That's Siobhan awesome. is up next. Miss Siobhan. Siobhan, where are you from? I am from Arizona, originally mm -hmm. from New York. New York? I, yeah. Cool. I'm having, uh, I really struggle um, trying to get everything together. And I had a question about signing order, because when you sign on to signing order, it asks you for prices and you can't <clears throat> not put prices in. So what do you put? 
Well, this this conversation is about direct business, right? This is about well, so it's not about signing services. So that's a completely different strategy. Uh, Ronnie, I mean, I. I, I typically put a base fee of what I'm willing to accept for the most part. In my opinion, I most of them don't really pay attention to that when they call you or when they send you their pricing. Uh, so I don't think it really matters a whole lot. But Ronnie, you want to you want to take this one on the signing order? Put zero because the signing services don't care what your fees are. I was going to say okay. they don't really care. <laughs> you know, coming from someone who owns one, I mean, and you guys cannot like to hear that or not. But I own a signing service and I really don't care what your fees are. If you need to counter offer when I send out the fee, great. Well, if we need to look at that fee, we will. It goes back and it says it, there's basically a coding system when you when you counter offer on most programs that says green, they said yes for this figure. Orange, they have a countered offer, and red says they couldn't do it. If you're in the orange, if nobody else says green. But you're running a high risk if you're in a big market by saying no if you can't take it. And just so everybody knows, and let's don't turn this call into this. This is direct business talk. This is talking about signing services. Right. Talking about direct business tonight. But this got brought up, so I'll ask. This is a Monday general mentorship at Notary Stars kind of question. Um, you can counter offer, but... You, you probably won't get it. And that's why other companies say take those little balls, which I saw a Facebook post about this in Florida notaries tonight where they said, you know, so-and-so has ruined the industry. They say take all the the low ball offers. Um, we're talking direct business tonight. Signing services really don't care what your fees are. They're going to offer you the best thing and unlimited ink does it too. So, I, you know, like I said before, I don't want to work for signing services, so I started. So if you want to see if a signing service actually will pay you more, don't even counter offer. Wait for them to put it out for a higher fee, because if no one took it, they're going to increase the fee and put it out again. And that's well, when you go, ha, 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 I got them. When you see well, the that same offer come out twice. The reason why I asked is because I gave my resume to someone and they looked me up on signing order. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was trying to do direct. It was a mortgage guy. So a mortgage guy could not look you up on signing order. So he must have had somebody look you up on signing order. They have that way for to put fees in, but I'll tell you that might be a one-time thing. Yeah. They don't mean anything to anybody signing okay. order. In fact, they're so far shoved down. We're only looking at your feedback up here and your fees are way down here. Yeah. Seriously. I'm only looking at how, what's her feedback, how many orders has she done, does people like her, is she blacklisted, and then your fees are down here. I don't care what your fees are. If you said yes, I'm only looking at this part of the screen. Right. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That was a, a really good question. It is a good question, yeah. And if you're concerned that I would just put zeros, like he said, it doesn't really matter. You know. Okay, thank you for the question. Uh, next question, Maritza. Hello. Sorry, I have my um, something's wrong with my video, so I uh, I just put my picture up. Okay. Uh, Abraham, hi. Hi. So I'm from Texas, and of course, in Texas, HELOCs you have to do in a attorney's office, title company, or lender's office. Uh, most of the time, the, some months back, I tried to um, contact a couple of title companies. They wanted to charge way too much money for their conference room, uh, or they didn't allow it. And same with attorney's offices. Any recommendations, advice that you can give on that? Abraham, can I take this one? Because I know you don't know the Texas market. I don't. Yeah, I'm oblivious. So go ahead. Okay. So this is part of the reason that Unlimited Inc. actually stays out of Texas. So um, in uh, Miss Marita, I know you're in Texas. That only applies when you're doing a refinance that has a cash out. Miss Beth, can you back me up on that when it when it comes to that? I just want to make sure that I'm giving the right advice here. Yeah, cash outs and HELOCs. Mm -hmm. Okay, this does not apply to purchases and sales. And I am against the Texas market. And I advise all notaries in Texas that have to do these cash outs where they have to like 
pay for a room, forget them. Yeah, Texas is that's why I don't a do them. huge part of this country, and if unless they want to pay you that fee to give you enough to buy that room, unless you have a partnership where you can do them where they're only going to charge you a very small fee, just give them up. Focus on the sales, the purchases, the reverse mortgages, the things that don't have cash outs that you have to be there for. Give up that part of the business, and 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 all Texas notaries should do that. You are not going to make money doing it. And the title and escrow companies know it. Just don't do it. Yeah. Okay. And Thank you. There's no right way around that answer. I just would not focus on those. Oh, I would no. replace <laughs> them with, you know, clients that can give you business that you don't have to pay to have a room for. Right. I think, and this is where qualifying them ahead of time is going to be crucial is what I, I imagine. So, And then Ms. Maritza, if you ever need to give me a call or send me an email and want to talk further about that, I'm very passionate about it in Texas. Um, I position myself throughout Texas without having to deal with that with unlimited ink. So I'd love to talk to you uh, if you need encouragement on that. Awesome. Thanks, Ronnie. And we have Abigail from Nuevo Mexico. Hello, everyone. Hi. <laughs> um, so first, I just want to thank Ronnie because I learned a lot from Notary Stars before. And I have my website up, um, which helped me get my first direct client. Um, wow. Yeah, it was a lawyer out of state. Oh, we're having a hard we're having a hard time hearing you. I think you're covering oh, up the mic. Is that better? Much yeah. better, yes, yes. Okay. So my question is I have been doing this since March and I've only seen one signing from Santa Fe or from New Mexico, period. So I'm trying to figure out how to approach them because they tell me I've already done like walked in, I've already done phone calls and they always say that they use either snap docs or I know I have to sign up for bank serve, but I've never seen anything from Santa Fe or from New Mexico as much as I do from California or Texas and stuff like that. So you're dual commissioned. Yeah. Have you marked yourself as dual commissioned? Yeah. Okay, so you know for sure that you're marked as dual commission. Usually on a border state, and sorry to hijack Abraham, but this is oh, something that definitely have, uh, you know, you see the same thing. But in, in most platforms, you have to mark yourself as dual commission. So it sounds to me that you are on a border of two states, right? I'm in between Arizona, well, in between Arizona, Colorado, and Texas. Okay. So I'm like in the middle. And you're commissioned for how many of those states? Well, no, I'm not commissioned for them. I'm in New Mexico, but I only help those who are here traveling and got last minute closings. So that's what I've noticed. My files are somebody who came to explore New Mexico and then they're signing closed and they're desperately needing someone. And that's where I come into place. So my 50 signings have been like that. I've no, maybe two have been Santa Fe refinances, but I haven't well, seen Santa any. Santa Fe is a big city. It's not like a, it's not like a small city and you're not an attorney only closing state, right? No, no. And I just not, I've been noticing that we are getting a lot of business because I can see it everywhere. I just don't see those signings coming in. So I don't know if they even are aware that we they can hire notaries. Well, here's the thing. So a lot of companies that do the refinances are not located in your city. Okay. Um, they're located outside of the state. So that means you're going to need to be on Snapdoc, Signing Order, Zig Sig, BankServe, all of those companies. And everyone's slow right now. I mean, it is the, okay. we're still at, you know, we're at February 15th. We're only 45 days into the year. Right. Um, interest rates are scheduled to drop actually in another 45 days or so. So we're going to start seeing those come in. And that's why we're doing these direct business talks. But okay. you need to position yourself and go into those companies and let them know that you are available when they start to get busy again. If they're okay. a side company, but 
remember what we talked about earlier in the night, they may not be a refi company. They might be new construction. And in Santa Fe, do you see a lot of new construction going up? Yeah, it's there's a lot. And I am very familiar with new constructions, land, and, and I'm familiar with land loans, um, mobile homes. Um, so here's, here's the, the kicker to that. I'm not familiar with it too. I know that I can do the file, but here's something that I learned that you may not know yet. And if you do, don't. I'm not talking down to you. Look at the developers on the fence and then go and see who does the title for that. That's how I got Mary Kay Homes by going and finding out who does the title for that. Where, when you go in, you, sometimes in these new developments, you have to go in with a realtor, get a realtor friend, go in and ask, Who's the title agency is it going to be? Okay. Then you okay. can get them as a client. And that's exactly how I won our big builder client out of Los Angeles. Uh, excuse me, not out of Los Angeles, Phoenix, Arizona. Okay. I went with a realtor friend to look at a home that I was <laughs> going to buy. Because sometimes you have to go in with a realtor. And then I ask, who's your title company? Never heard of them before. Because they okay. do title for the new builders. Okay. Yeah, good. It's good advice. And it's part of that qualifying process for sure. So. And okay. I just want to plug this for anybody that stuck around that we we're down to 66 after hundreds tonight. I just want to say this during COVID supplies came to a halt when it came to uh, new builds. And now those supplies are moving again. The economy is moving again. And we're, you know, we mentioned this earlier, Abraham, in the year that, uh, New builds are a, are a big target. If you haven't gone after new construction builds, yeah, they got their materials and the houses are opening and the apartments are opening and the condos are opening and things have to be notarized for that. And it's still going on. And that's what's really carried a lot of people through to refinance this comeback. Absolutely. Yeah, it's true. It's coming, guys. We warned you guys on this show Years before, you know, a couple years ago when it was about to slow down and it was busy and a lot of you didn't believe and a lot of you did, weren't necessarily prepared at the time. Well, now we're telling you the opposite is going to happen. We're predicting it's going to start getting busy, which is why we're having this conversation. It's because it makes sense that this is the time to start doing this. Uh, if it's already busy, then you may be a little late because other people might have already started doing what we're telling you guys to do now. So. Good stuff, guys. I think that brings us to the end of the show. We did pretty good this time, Ronnie. We didn't go over four hours like last time. So that's... I, uh, I know. We only went over like 24 minutes. So before you play your intro, I'm going to do this because this is something that we like to see because we're actually filming it as well. Okay. Before you play your outro, Abraham, I'd like to ask everybody to turn on their cameras, not for me, but for Abraham this time because this is his show. I'm just happy to be on it. We're just recording it. I want you guys to turn on those cameras, though, because the replay of this, show those other notaries who you are, wave that flag, get ready to walk in for direct business tomorrow. And if you didn't watch the other episodes that we've done on direct business, they're available on Notary Stars. And please go to Abraham's website. Abraham, if you could put that in the chat for everybody, right. and I'll put it on the replay. Uh, make sure everybody knows how to go and subscribe to your podcast, because I'm not the only guest on Abraham's podcast. You guys might be here because I sent out an email on Notary Stars. But this is Abraham's show. This is Notary Business Talk. If you guys notice, I'm a lot quieter on this uh, because it's Abraham's show. So please turn on those cameras and give him a wave from the Notary Stars members there. I see those cameras lighting up when we do our little wave there. Nobody wants to miss the wave. <laughs> All right, Abraham, if you want to play your outro, we'll be glad to hear it. Yeah, and then I'll just finish with this. I'll give you my little final. Just again, guys, feedback questions are amazing. We'll use that for next show. Also, just make sure you guys support our affiliates, Notary Gadget, Ethos, and if support me on Patreon if you found value out of this. And until next time, be well, take care, and stay productive, guys. Bye now. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Notary Business Talk. To learn more about becoming a notary entrepreneur or to find out how Abraham can help you achieve your business goals, visit notarybusinesstalk.com.